guys, this is Acidic Roots. Okay, we are here in part 5 of Donkey Kong Country. It's time to head to world 5 of 6, Creme Croc Industries. So this is the industrial world, and you're going to see some stuff, man-made stuff, even though there's really no men in this. So, it, yeah, it said that the... the Crocodiles, the Kremlins, are the ones that made this place, and this is kind of the a sub theory to the story is that uh, they're, you know, these guys are kind of polluting the island in addition to stealing their bananas. So if you look hard enough, you actually do find that, you know, at, you know, every once in a while they'll have the criminals where they do, you know, more than just one crime even though they're only really on trial for the one thing, which is just get your bananas back, but, you know, this, you know, this is said to be what they did, so, uh, yeah, the, the Banjo-Kazooie series kind of did that with the witch character Gruntilda, she kind of polluted and stuff as well, but, I mean, I, I don't 100% remember, I, I'm not sure if they really said that these guys are behind it, but I do think because the world is called Creme Croc Industries, that you get the idea, so, but, <clears throat> yeah, this is Donkey Kong's Island, which is another thing they don't really talk about, so, yeah. Once again, I find myself trying to get as many bananas as possible, and I know I'll need them. And, you know, the whole thing is, is I underestimated this world. I thought it was going to be simple enough to get through with the exception of Poison Pond. I watched a long play on this game to see what I was up against, and it turns out that the swordfish is in that stage, so that made it hella easier, just so you can get through it. I mean, you can essentially take as many hits as you want as long as you don't lose the animal. And I want to make a side note that these monkeys that throw the barrels at you, these are a pain in the ass. It's a particular point on this stage where you know, they throw, the, the barrels roll slow, but they throw the barrels fast, so it's kind of, it'll trip you up, you think, oh, I can jump over that, but no, he's throwing them, it looks like, as fast as he possibly can, so, but, yeah, uh, maybe I thought that the stage was going to be longer, but, uh, that was, this is actually my second playthrough of this, and it gave me trouble, I got a game over my first time around, so, I mean, it could, I could have made this like an eight or a nine part LP, but I figured, you know, we, we needed to get this show on the road, so, but, but this, there is something here, I mean, in the later stages, you really don't want to be ditty too much unless you have to, is because a lot of the enemies that they put in the game, Diddy is unable to take out. So, I mean, if you jump on them, he'll bounce off because of his light weight. And, you know, especially on little platforms like this, it's not a good thing. So that was much to my dismay when I did it, you know. <laughs> but, you know, it's... I think there's actually a mode in this called two-player contest, and that allows you to be both of the monkeys and uh, you, you just take turns, kind of like Super Mario World, how one's Mario and one's Luigi, so you know you do that. But of course, uh, you know I think you get the purple and you get the purple Diddy and Donkey, so. Edition. Now, I don't remember how it happened, but I remember once when I was playing Donkey Kong Country 2, Diddy pulled out a golden guitar, and the music just completely altered, and I think if you look it up on the internet, it talks about a specific special guitar that he pulls out. It was awkward. I mean, I, I found it like the weirdest thing, but I only managed to get that one time. 
I don't even know if it was because I rented the game or what the hell that came from, but I don't know the chances of getting it. It was just, you know, that he had a golden guitar and the music went all strange, but... Yeah, apparently Diddy can play guitar if you didn't know that, so that's an extra thing about him. He's kind of seen as like the angsty teenager, and you know, it was a good fit for him. I mean, it's a nice little trick that he can play guitar. You know, folks like, uh, you know, Lane Staley and some of these folks were pretty prominent back in the 90s, so. Wait, wait a minute, it wasn't Diddy that could play the guitar, it was Dixie that played the guitar, but, but then, you know, in the Nintendo 64 game, Diddy does play the guitar, I was thinking he did it in Donkey Kong Country too, but he pulled, I'm thinking, the gold boom box, but still, I mean, something was gold, it's a whole fucking thing there. And... Yeah, see that, you look at that, Kong right there, he throws the barrels, and I realize, you know, I'm gonna have to, you know, these muscle-bound dudes are gonna take some, you know, stronger efforts. You know, he throws them quicker on the industrial stages. So, alright, so after this, we get a save point, and then from that point forward, you know, the only thing left to worry about is really Poison Pond, even though there is another minecart stage. So, but somehow, I mean, it, it's tricky, but it's not, it's just meddlesome at, at most. So, this is an easy stage. God, well, I guess you can't even say that. I mean, this stage did piss me off also. I mean, once again, you're going to want to do Donkey Kong and try to keep him around. Those are pretty cool colored snakes. I mean, stand out. So. <clears throat> yeah, there weren't... I don't think there were cave stages in the sequel. And... They, they've just about covered every type of biome that there would be. Yeah. Cause that, that's what's always creative about adventure games, is you don't know what sort of uh, environment you're going to be placed in. That's what made the, the Halo game so brilliant, is that first Halo that came out in 2001. It, you know, it, by the time you got to like the ice stage, it was like it really set in. I mean, there were definitely stages like truth and reconciliation and those type of things. They just, those are brilliant things. But it's, it's really been a while since I've played an adventure game. I don't know how many folks are out there, uh, you know, just trying to find games like Mario and stuff, but it's just kind of uncommon. I mean, there was a game called Ukulele that came out, but. Yeah, so. Chalk one up for not being Donkey Kong. But. <clears throat> yeah. So I don't know what the hell Mario's been up to for folks that like him. I mean. Mario is like in some new game called Super Mario Odyssey or something. I don't know what the hell is going on. Looks, looks so strange. I mean, Mario's really been in some odd games this year. They've had such little promotion. You know, I haven't been hearing about him on television or any of that. You know, resources have just been relatively thin. I mean, Nintendo has just kind of kept to themselves. Last thing I really remember hearing about them was the edition of the Super Nintendo Classic Edition. And I've said before, you know, if you go and search around on Acidic Roots, you can see me looking around for the NES Classic that came out last year. And, you know, they had limited fund or limited supply of that, and now people are trying to sell it for 300 250 bucks on there. It's just not worth it, considering it came out and it's supposed to be 60 I mean, 30 games for $60 is a great price, but, but anyhow, the Super Nintendo, that was really the last thing I paid attention to, and, uh... <clears throat> 
that was actually supposed to come out this month, September. So, but I'm not really interested as much as I was in the Nintendo Classic, and can't duck that second one. But. Yeah, I mean, Super Nintendo Classic, I would just recommend to folks who missed the train on the Super Nintendo, whoever it was, but, you know, this game is one of the games included on it, but, yeah, I, mean, I don't know how Nintendo does it, I mean, I guess the thing is, is they have their own YouTube channel, which kind of updates all their stuff, but that seems, you know, that seems kind of, you know, odd for them to only use that channel as, like, their promotion for it. I mean, I guess what I'm trying to say is I don't know where the promotion's coming from, but, you know, where you have to really know what's going on. IGN's a pretty good place, but even then... Oh. So... But yeah, Mario's got a new game. I think it actually came out this month, or is coming out soon, something like that. The Nintendo Switch. Makes me wonder if Zelda's gonna win Game of the Year. But... <clears throat> but yeah, this is where things get tricky. You know, there's something to note, and this is an important tool to remember, is the fact that the, de the developers are proactive in this. So, that's the thing. They anticipate where gamers are probably going to rest or do something like that, and then, of course, that's how you wind up getting hit, because they say, oh, they think they can stop you. So, I mean, changing your way of thinking is not easy, but, you know, proactive. We're 38% done with the game, despite the fact that we're, you know, five-sixths of the way done with the game. So this is the last stage, and this gives me some grief, but it, you know, as long as you know what you're doing, it's, it's about middle of the road in difficulty. Plus the green is pretty, you should, I mean, that's pretty even. Seeing them 
and I made that mistake because I was trying to get a barrel or something, so I think I don't remember if I do this stage in one take, but it still is one of the longer stages. I mean, we came in when this video was at 12 minutes, and it's probably going to last until we've still got another 4 minutes to go, so maybe I do die once. Yeah, I do, because I remember keeping the animal buddy for later. <laughs> so yeah, this, this game has been getting Let's Play for over nine years now. I mean, there's folks who probably did this back in 2008, but, you know, when I look at Let's Plays that, you know, folks say, well, what's the point in watching yours because someone beat you to this by nine years? I mean, the whole thing is, though, is, I mean, how many times do you want to watch the game? I mean, that's what I always put into the picture is, you know, folks watch this game and, you know, they either develop feelings and, uh, you know, develop feelings and sentimental value for the videos that they watched or they're willing to watch new ones. I always kind of thought, you know, if you've watched the same one that you watched nine years ago over 20 times, why not give someone else a try? So that's, you know, that's the basis of YouTube, is, you know, being a YouTuber, so many folks will say, like, well, you gotta be first, but I don't really think that that's, you know, accurate. I mean, that's, I mean, you, you know, we're, we're trying to sit there and apply business concepts to this sort of thing, like first come, first serve, and that sort of stuff, and, you know, it's foolish to do that, you know. I mean, you gotta look at an instance and say, what would, what would be something that could come second that I would say, nope, you know, I only want it if it comes first. I mean, <laughs> I'm trying to create a metaphor, but it's kind of tough to do that at the same time, you know. <laughs> I mean, you just get creative and you'll see what I'm talking about, but really, this game is timeless. That's the main thing about it, is it should be simple enough to watch, but... My next LP, that one's going to come out in the autumn, so I've got a couple ones in mind. There's one that I wanted to do, I was going to do the mask, but the problem with it is you can't save. So I've had a lot of fucking video games this year that I've attempted to do, but due to either the difficulty or just everything going wrong, I just haven't been able to do, so... You know, it's just getting tricky trying to figure out what games I want to do. I take inspiration from things like Pat the NES Punk, and he, you know, he messed, 